In many highway maintenance operations, it's the loader operator who keeps things going. And although it takes a while to get a feel for the machine and how it works, you'll see that there's a certain rhythm to operation, a balance. The loader is a powerful machine, and in the hands of a skilled operator, it can get a lot of work done in a day. In part one of this program on loader operation, we went through the procedures for starting up the loader, operating the loader controls, and shutting down at the end of the day. Here in part two, we'll cover maneuvering the loader and some of the basic operations you'll perform as a loader operator. The first thing to consider when driving the loader is bucket position. You should keep the bucket around two feet off the ground and rolled back. Never travel with a bucket high in the air. Besides cutting down your visibility, it makes the machine top heavy. A good bump could tip you over. You could also get snagged on overhead power lines or tree limbs. Keep the bucket low for better control. And remember, the bucket can be used to carry many things, but not people. Never allow riders in the bucket or anywhere else on the loader. To drive the loader forward, first fasten your seatbelt. Make sure you're in neutral. Then start the loader and raise the bucket to travel position. Release the parking brake and shift into gear. You'll remember there are two forward gears. Low gear for working. And high gear for traveling. Pretty simple, right? Well, backing up is easy too. Just stop the loader put it in reverse, and back up. Your rear view field of vision in a loader is excellent. Use it. Now, as you learned earlier, steering a loader is quite a bit different than steering a car or truck. The whole front end swings around when you turn the wheel. The frame is articulated. It gives you a much tighter turning radius to maneuver in close quarters. But when you're driving in the yard or to the job site, give yourself plenty of room to go around obstacles. If your turns are too sharp, the rear end will hit whatever you're trying to get around. And remember, never let anyone in the pivot area when the engine's running. I'm sure you remember that barrel we crushed in part one. Now a couple of points to remember. Loaders don't have springs or shock absorbers. A bad bump, even a small one, can rock the loader enough to cause control problems. Slow down on rough terrain. And keep the bucket about two feet off the ground. If the loader gets to rocking and the bucket's too low, there's a chance it will dig into the ground and you'll lose control. Another thing to keep in mind are your doors. Never operate with the loader doors swinging open. If you do, they'll get banged up like this in no time. Now let's take a look at a couple of basic operations. Working with stockpiles and dump trucks. First, stockpiling. Moving a stockpile from one place to another I know, sounds like the military, right? Well, in fact, it's an excellent operation to learn how to maneuver the loader and use the boom and bucket controls. Keep your work area as smooth as possible. A level area lets you move more quickly and improves your productivity. Clean up the area around the stockpile before, during, and after the operation. 
When you're working with stockpiles, it's important that you keep the bucket down low and level to the ground as you go into the pile. If you go at the stockpile with the bucket rolled forward, you'll dig into the ground before you reach the pile. Besides making your area look like a battlefield, you'll contaminate the stockpile material. Since this is a stockpile of a special aggregate, the contaminated portion is no good. On the other hand, if you go at the pile with the bucket rolled back, the loader will push right up the side of the pile, compacting the material underneath. Your front wheels will lose traction, and you won't get much material in the bucket either. So keep the bucket level, with the blade just off the ground. Most loaders have an indicator somewhere on the boom that shows you when the bucket's level. And you also have an automatic leveler in the cab. Just pull it to the left and let it go. And the bucket returns to the level position as you lower the boom. Go straight in at the bottom of the stockpile. Then lift the boom and roll the bucket back as you continue pushing into the pile. Keep the bucket curled back as you back out of the pile. Go to the site of the new stockpile and curl the bucket forward to dump the material. Dump from as low a height as possible. That prevents scattering the material all over the area. Then go back for more. During this or any operation, pay attention to how the machine is running. Keep an eye on the gauges. If anything goes out of the normal operating range, stop working and investigate. And when you take a break, give the loader a quick walk-around inspection. Look for loose parts, leaks, or any sign of damage, and take care of it. Clean out the pre-cleaner now and then. As I said in part one, dirty air is one of the leading causes of diesel engine failure. It doesn't take much time to take care of your equipment. Digging material out of a bank is just about the same as working a stockpile. The only difference is the material in a bank is harder and more compact. You need to work a little slower and use more power to dig it out. Go straight in with a bucket level and low. Curl the bucket back as you raise the boom. Then back out when the bucket's full. You'll also have to work stockpiles of the salt we use for snow and ice control. Again, the procedure is the same. But the stockpile is usually stored indoors in a salt shed. That's different. The problem is clearance. The bucket can easily reach the rafters in the shed. You've got to keep the entrance to the shed clear. If the material builds up in the doorway, it cuts down your overhead clearance. And even though the shed is not exactly the Cornhusker Hotel in Lincoln, it needs its roof. Okay, now loading trucks. As I said earlier, working with a stockpile is good practice for other loader operations. It's hard to damage a pile of dirt. But loading trucks requires a little more practice and a lot more care. So if loader operation is new to you, take it easy. Think about every move you make. 
Try to follow a three-point path. Go into the stockpile, raise the boom, and curl the bucket back. Then back out and turn. Go straight in at the side of the truck, raising the bucket high enough to clear the side. If you go in at an angle, half of the bucket load will end up on the ground. Roll the bucket forward to dump it. After you dump the bucket, roll it back or lift the boom before you back out. If you don't clear the side of the box, you're going to do a lot of damage. Always keep an eye on the driver or other people around you. The driver should be in the cab or well away from the truck. A hard hat won't do any good when you're talking about a bucket full of heavy material. One more point about loading trucks. Don't dump the material with the bucket up too high. If that was a bucket full of rock instead of dirt, the driver might need a new suspension system for his truck. Okay, let's take a look at one more operation. Loading pipe on a trailer. It's really a two or three man operation. While you're operating the loader, the others help with the chains and stacking. The trick is to adjust the chains so the pipe is balanced. Then moving slowly, you operate the boom and bucket control to lift and lower the pipe. The first layer of pipe should be blocked. Then chain down loosely to keep them from rolling when you put on the second layer. As in all loader operations, careful work in avoiding dangerous situations is the best way to get the job done. I really can't stress safety enough. The loader is a powerful machine and it demands respect and careful operation. Read the manual. Read the manufacturer's warning. Know the capabilities and limitations of the machine. The loader can be used on any number of maintenance jobs but it can be dangerous if not operated correctly. And that's it for loader operation. We've covered a lot of ground in two programs, but watching a TV show won't make you a good operator. That takes practice, experience, and a willingness to learn. If you're a new operator, these programs are meant to give you a start. To show you the capabilities of the machine, and your responsibilities for its daily maintenance. And if you're an experienced highway worker, maybe you picked up some details you'll find useful. Either way, the rest is up to you.